The Chesapeake Bay has long been one of the world's most fertile locations for harvesting oysters due to its ideal temperature, salinity, and lack of natural predators for them. The oyster boom on the bay truly began in the mid-1800s due to several factors. First, there were some geographical advantages as the city of Baltimore and its hundreds of canning houses were located along the Chesapeake. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad extended west from there and allowed for easy distribution of these processed oysters throughout the country. Additionally, oyster beds in New England had been depleted, leaving the Chesapeake as the primary source on the eastern seaboard. Finally, the attitude around oysters shifted from being seen as a working class staple to a popular delicacy enjoyed around the country during that time. All of these advantages created conditions similar to a gold rush, where prospective watermen sought to make their fortune in a largely unregulated environment. Naturally, violence soon followed. One significant source of conflict was between those who used tongs to collect oysters and others who used dredges. Tongs were sort of like an elongated set of kitchen tongs with rake prongs at the end that could be used to scoop up oysters from beds. They were the traditional method of catching oysters and were effective only to a depth of around 30 feet. Dredges, introduced in the early 1800s, were a mesh basket with metal teeth dragged behind a vessel that could enable a much larger catch for less effort. However, dredges were also a more expensive tool that could destroy oyster habitat in shallower waters. Many poorer watermen resented their use, seeing them as destructive to oyster beds and thus their longer-term livelihoods for short-term profit. Virginia passed a law banning the use of dredges in 1811, while Maryland did the same in 1820. Maryland also passed a law in 1865 that required all oystermen working the bay to have a paid license. However, these and other laws were not effectively enforced and helped to stoke violence between those who used tongs and others with dredges. In response, in 1868, Maryland created the State Oyster Police Force, a predecessor to the modern-day Maryland Natural Resources Police. By 1894, the Oyster Police had 120 men and 21 ships, including a steamboat, the Governor R.M. McLean, that had a mounted 12-pound boat howitzer. Despite this, the Oyster Police were generally not effective at stopping illegal harvesting or conflict between oystermen, as many of the so-called oyster pirates were themselves well-armed and organized. Additionally, these were hardy men, many of whom were Civil War veterans and accustomed to the difficult conditions of fishing and oyster harvesting. Most of them also grew up in poor waterfront towns and saw the boom in oyster value as their first real chance at upward mobility. Small skirmishes often broke out over the next hundred years. The pirates would operate at night, so the oyster police would often adopt ambush tactics, dimming their lights and then rushing forward and firing on the pirates' boats. The police also placed armed boats at the mouths of rivers to prevent harvesting there. A few major violent events between the oyster police and pirates are worth noting. In February 1884, the police schooner Julia Hamilton came upon 20 pirate vessels illegally dredging. The schooner exchanged fire with the pirates, including with its six-pounder cannon on board, but its sails were heavily damaged and the pirates were able to board it. However, they agreed to a truce when one of them was killed, and the Julia Hamilton retreated. On December 10, 1888, violence broke out between pirates and the police when the pirates mistakenly fired upon a nearby passenger steamboat. They ambushed the Governor R.M. McLean with a number of boats, causing it to respond by ramming and sinking two of them with its iron bow. Twenty-four prisoners were also captured. Finally, in late December of that same year, the Julia Hamilton came upon another group of pirates illegally dredging. A battle of several hours ensued, with over 600 shots fired by police and many returned by the pirates. The pirates were able to escape, but their boats were damaged in the battle. Five pirate schooners were captured and towed away by the oyster police. The event that prompted the end of the oyster wars was the death of an illegal dredger in April 1959 at the hands of the oyster police. The public backlash caused them to be disbanded, as they had long been seen as controversial and ineffective. Other methods like legislation, environmental research, and taxation were gradually adopted to balance oyster harvesting and conservation. However, the oyster population in the Chesapeake has been in decline since the 1880s. Increases in pollution and disease, along with lower salinity levels, have been part of the cause of this in recent decades, but the main reason over the last 140 years has been overharvesting and habitat destruction.